Hello, everybody. My name is Sandra Yap, and I am here with Ruben Yap of Zcoin. Today, we are going to talk about everything personal of getting to know Ruben. Because all this time we've known Ruben, we know that he was the CEO of Zcoin, now the project steward of Zcoin. Um, <laughs> Now we want to know him on a more personal level. So let's get started. Ruben, how are you? I'm doing great. And it's always nice to see you again. I mean, it's, we have a lot of fun times together and a bit sad that, that you know, you're no longer like a big part of Zcoin, but uh, you'll always be in our hearts. So, but thanks for yes. doing this. <laughs> Zcoin is always in my heart for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so today we are going personal. We want to know you as a person hmm. who is Ruben Yap tell me about yourself like what you're what you were doing before Zcoin uh, well you know I I'm, was trained as a lawyer or actually more accurately as a barrister and and not not a coffee uh, yeah, we always get that confused, like barrister, barrister. But, uh, you know, basically the barrister is like the guy that goes to court and stuff like that, right? And you have to wear the wig? Uh, no, well, there was, a, there was a movement to try to go back to that, but I think it never really took off. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't actually spend on a wig. I used, my, I used one of the other partner's wigs for it. <laughs> But but Man, yeah, you have I mean, to show us a photo. Do you have a no, photo of you in the way? No, 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 no. I actually didn't end up to actually practice as a barrister. I end up doing a lot of corporate law. Um, I actually don't do very well in like I would say in the litigation kind of situation where you're like fighting on with each other and like you're just trying to dig up all sorts of crap. Uh, and yeah. you know it's like really adversarial right and I I'm guess I'm more of like oh let's try to find something that's fair for both sides right and only yeah. if you really really cannot uh, get along with each other then we have to fight right but I think so my I, I end up doing I started up with like conveyancing and, and then it's like you know basically sale of land and things like that which was quite simple and then I actually did uh even debt recovery, which was quite interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had to like seize property from people who did not. Oh, that's uh, fun. Yeah, and then, like people wanted to fun beat me up. Fun and not fun. Uh, in retrospect, it's fun, but uh, it was quite interesting. I think like the ten, the tenant didn't want to pay, and then he didn't want to move out as well. So I had to go there with the court bailiff, and they lock me inside the shop and like threaten me <laughs> so that was a really fun story <laughs> so yeah i mean that... quit being when a lawyer quit, huh? after that i think it was i think january 2018 right i think okay so about end. like four years later no two years four? because uh launched in 2016 right yeah so uh i quit my i was actually a partner at the law firm and i just like gave up my partnership and to go full-time into uh, Zcoin. And that was quite a What big was step. the uh, rationale behind that decision? <sighs> um, well, I actually have... So, so the firm that I worked for, you know, was a kind of like... Uh, my, my father was one of the like co-founders of, of this firm and kind of it was like grown, right? And obviously the idea was like, oh, you know, I will take over part of it and and I, I did tell him you know like I was actually for already around like four or five years I was already telling my my dad I'm like can I quit you know like <laughs> I've already so you done were, this. You felt like you were not made for for being in that industry. Yeah I, I wouldn't say I was bad but it was more of like I, love I still the think stuff you're a pretty I, good lawyer. <laughs> I think it's more of like, I didn't really believe in what I was doing in, in certain cases. Right. And especially the last few projects that I did, uh, you know, I did some like government work and advisory work. And sometimes I felt like you dedicating so much of your life to doing something, you're trying to do a good job, but you know that none of your... Uh, none of your uh, recommendations would be used. It's, it's just one of those checklists to say, I've done the review, 
tick, 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 and then it would just be fouled somewhere else and like get gets rotten in storage or something right. like that, right? So you're like, all right, yeah, I'm earning money from this, but I'm not actually doing useful work. And I really felt like, ah, uh, you know, this, it really eats at you to know that you have to do good work, but then you, it's not going to be used at all, right? So yeah. that really questioned, like, what am I doing? Uh, like your and, values were not cemented. In- yeah, so I didn't feel like I was having a positive effect on, on anything. It right. was just more of like, oh yeah, I'm doing due diligence, tick, 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 tick. Yeah. So then you realized privacy was in your blood, you're going to move on, and you're going to full on be in Zcoin. So, <laughs> so what happened? Um, it, like, how did you get to find out about Zcoin? How did you get involved in cryptocurrency? Because mm, I, I started a VPN business in like 2007. Uh, and that was actually, you know, to be frank, it was um, because I had, I really enjoyed anime and I couldn't get an anime in, uh, in, in, in Malaysia because they were blocking all the P2P services. And so we just started this service to, to be able to download stuff, uh, like all this anime stuff. And because there weren't really many VPN services out there, uh, I just found this guy off an internet forum and we decided to create this VPN service. I think we spent like 600 ringgit, which is like, I don't know, less, like 200, less than 200 less USD. Less than 200, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, we each spent maybe 100 USD each. We rented the server and we were like, hey, you know, do you, does anyone else want to join in? Because like, you know, like a hundred USD it, per month. Yeah, no, didn't it's it kind of expensive. Like anime. Biggest, didn't it become like the largest VPN provider in Malaysia? At yeah, one point? I think I think it. Well, we definitely were the biggest in Malaysia, but I think even in Southeast Asia, we were pretty big. Wow. I think at one point, Life Hacker actually um, rated us as I think like one of the top VPN companies in the world, which was I think this was in. Maybe 2012. It was quite a while ago. Uh, that was really exciting, and I think I that remember, kind of um, yeah. Someone was trying to pay you in Bitcoin. And that's how yes. you get it. Yes, right. Because you know, people are like saying like, like you're a privacy service. Why don't you accept like Bitcoin? Of course, then we didn't know better. We thought Bitcoin was private. And yeah, then I was like, okay, what's this funny money? And I, I was like, how do I convert it to my local currency, right? And, and then I found some guy in Singapore. He's actually, we, I don't know if you know Yuzin. I think he runs Cake DeFi and a couple of other stuff quite prominent in the Singapore scene. And he was the guy that bought my, my first few Bitcoin. I was kind of silly. I just converted it all because all I wanted was the cash, right? I was still telling to myself, I need, I need to treat this as a business, not as an investment or speculative. So I just yeah. like converted it. I was like, ah, now I regret. But How long was ago f- was that? What year was that? I think uh, late 2012, early 2013, around that. It was, it's okay. Yeah. You know, do not regret <laughs> your past. Look to the yeah, field. it was actually really fun because after that I kind of like um, started getting into mining. Like, like we rented uh, a little shop house and like filled it with mining rigs, and it was wow, a lot of. And how fun. did you how did you get involved in uh, Dash? Because I remember you saying you were involved in Dash before Zcoin. Mm, well, I mean, not officially, but it was like a very active community member. Um, I think it was a re- it was Dash was actually then known as Dark Coin. Uh, I think it was actually the what year was the, that? Around the same time, like 2013, 2014. Oh. Wow. Uh, and they were even just starting the master notes, and I was like, wow, that time it was like six thousand dollars for a master note, and now like Dash, I don't know how much is it's like really expensive right now, but. Yeah. But yeah, because they were the first ones, I think one of the first guys with like that, uh, Darkcoin and Monero, I think Darkcoin might be even a bit earlier. I'm not really sure on that, but mm-hmm. um, I was like, wow, this are uh, like, it's private. And I was like, I really like the idea behind this uh, privacy stuff. And I kind of got involved and I even like printed a bunch of like 
custom T-shirts, which I still have stock of uh, with the dash wow. white paper. Uh, I wrote a lot. I lo- wrote some of the earliest uh, master note guides, like how to host a master note, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I actually wanted to to get into the Monero community because that time uh, it was like, wow, you know, two privacy coins. But then like there was a couple of really toxic people uh, that ah, were okay. like, yeah, they were like, there was a very strong rivalry between Dash and Monero. But, but anyway, uh, how I got into Zcoin was basically I kind of, uh, Dash kind of like shifted away from privacy. They, they, they started focusing like really on their master notes and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And I mean, I don't blame them on that. But then Zcoin was coming along and they were, were talking about this process of destroying coins and then redeeming them. I was like, wow, this is pretty exciting. Where did you hear about Zcoin? How did you stumble across Zcoin? I think Bitcoin talk. You know, like back then, like where you find all the new altcoins, you just mm-hmm. go on Bitcoin talk forums and you're like, ooh, what's, what's this new cool thing, right? And... Uh, I saw it. I was like, "Oh, this looks really good." And I think I actually joined not because, to be like totally honest, when I joined, it was like, "Yeah, this is really exciting." I also was like, "I've done almost like everything in the cryptocurrency scene before." Then like, I did the mining, I did the trading, I lost funds on you know all this exchange hacks, and I was like, "I wanted, I want to." know what it's like to work uh, like within a cryptocurrency uh, itself. And then I was still a lawyer and I said like, look, just pay me 250 US dollars worth of Zcoin uh, a month and I'll be like your, your, your community, community manager. manager. Yeah. And I started writing Wait, who like... Did you, who did you contact? Did you contact Poramin? No, I, uh, I can't really remember how it got in. It was a bit blur, but Either it was either Gary or, or Poramin and I just like ah, offered okay. myself and they gave me like some small <laughs> shitty amount of Z coin and I was just like, and okay, that fine. It. That was that yeah. Was, that was how you got hooked. What was your position in Z coin? Oh, this is quite funny because um, I mean, by then I actually kind of like evolved. I wasn't really a community manager anymore. And the thing is that we don't really have actual titles is more of like we need to put something up and like what are you from zcoin right and obviously because i was like the the person like the spokesperson for zcoin then uh, no one wants to talk to a community manager right and actually my role had already expanded beyond that i was like being involved almost in like very strategic decisions of the of the project but we're like ah uh, you know what can what title can I give? Uh, can can you bestow on me that people want to talk <laughs> to me? That's kind of reflective of what what I do. And then I just said, Param, I told Paramin like, "Hey, uh, what do you think? Can can no one wants to talk to me because I'm just a community manager? What do you think? Just give me the COO title so people that will talk to me, right?" And he's like, "Yeah, sure, okay, <laughs> you know." So <laughs> I mean. From from 2016 to 2018, when um, you became a COO, I think that whole time you were involved with most of the operations anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. Like it was almost, it was like a gradual, I started taking up more and more tasks and it just happened that, you know, I also gained like a lot more technical knowledge of how the, the stuff worked and, you know, there were like certain vacuums, like we had early developers and then like when they left, you know, there was that vacuum and then I stepped in and just kind of like slowly assimilate more you and more You worked your tasks. way up from a community manager. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think it wasn't like really like working your way. I was just like, oh, I care about this project. It's kind of like a startup, right? Like realistically, a startup, you kind of have to do everything. And Yeah, that's true. And, How was it like though yeah. when you uh, first met Paramin? Where? I Where think uh, I can't remember why, but I went to Bangkok and I was supposed to meet Paramin, and it's quite funny because um, I th- I don't know if he remembered that I was coming because I I I went to his office and he wasn't 
there and no one knew where he was. So I was kind of like left waiting. I was like, what the heck? You know, I came all the way to Bangkok. I'm like, he's not even here. <laughs> okay, all developers are like that. All developers yeah. go missing in action, just like coding their way through and just forget the world exists. So yeah. it's okay. And Don't take it personally. <laughs> no, definitely. And I mean, like, Parmin, I think he's quite a reserved guy. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think he's quite private in nature. So I think the first meeting was a like kind of businessy, you know, like we were just like discussing what to do with Z coin, what we want to do. This is all the stuff. And so that was like quite, of course, we like hung out a bit. But I think the only time, I think it was only like maybe like a few years later that I, uh, when I started visiting Bangkok more and, and um, doing more stuff there. I think one time like he brought me out for dinner and he got like slightly drunk uh, over like some wine and then he started <laughs> telling me his life story and that I, I felt like I, I really got to know him then <laughs> but before that it was like really professional and I mean I knew that Parmi was a stand-up guy right like you know he's I wouldn't say that he's motivated by 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 money he's motivated by b- building a lot of cool stuff so but I only got to hear like his whole vision, how he started, like how he, how he he got into Z coin and all his interests only when he got drunk. So I think that's uh, something that's uh, underrated, like you know the the face to face alcohol meeting, right? <laughs> it's always the alcohol that develops relationships. <laughs> so let's um let's sum this up. What is um kind of what where do you see yourself in Z coin from now on? I mean, like right now, I think the the title is quite apt, like Project Steward, although not pe- people don't really know what it's like. Yeah. Oh right. Why? What, what made? What was the decision? You know, to change from a COO to Project Steward. Well, first of all, we don't have a CEO, right? I mean, uh, we have Parman as the founder. Um, you know, but there isn't like a chief executive, and it's kind of like against the idea of a decentralized project, right? That we, we don't want to be like this body that just controls a Z coin. Of course, that may be needed to start with, but um, eventually it should b- move beyond us, right? Yeah. And the way we see it is like, I would like to think of myself like I'm the still I'm looking after the project until you know the the community and other people come along and like you know take this to the another the next level of course that can't happen immediately uh i mean like even bitcoin took a while right uh, and i think it's it's more like let's look after the project let's do what we we think it's right and when the community and we we're, st- we're starting to try and give more control to the community and like you know like okay certain funds that we, we cannot use like willy-nilly uh, like that we have this reserve fund uh, and we're, we've been organizing like monthly community meetings we want to hear feedback so I think we're, we're trying to create that community governance type of thing but mm-hmm. the, gov- the community also has to mature right because yeah, that's uh, true. yeah. so I think uh, the steward is like I'm looking after it until to a point you maybe don't need me anymore and Hopefully, then it'll be like totally decentralized. So that's kind of how it is. And we felt and like COO, CEO. Yourself, that's how you see yourself being involved with, with Zcoin too, right? So just yeah. the project steward until the project can be independent and fully, yeah, I mean, I fully hope, decentralized. I hope, I hope we reach there someday. Uh, and I think it's more of like we are trying to facilitate like making sure that the community knows like what's going on because it is really quite a full-time job and sometimes expecting people to contribute their life for free, I think it's a bit unrealistic. So yeah. I'm just kind of like facilitating it. Yeah. <laughs> so to sum, to sum it up, is it safe to say that Ruben will forever be with Zcoin, you know, fully committed to Zcoin now and forever until... <laughs> truly decentralized moment i mean i believe a lot in zcoin i wouldn't dare to say i'll be if zcoin forever i think i hope not not because not because i don't believe in the project but like i do believe that for the project to grow 
there may be someone better than me out there or you know maybe the community can take over but like once we deliver the landers once we deliver all the roadmap items and and i feel that whatever it is you know i want if ever i want to leave zcoin in the state i'm like it can stand on its own you know it doesn't really yeah. need um like thing i, I mean this so is you, not yeah go on. so you will be a parent until the yeah kind of i think that's a good good way to, <laughs> to that's good to put it <laughs> that's good all right um i think that's all for now and i uh, hope yes. you guys know more about ruben uh i'm sure we can answer you ruben you can also answer if there's like any comments and sure, uh definitely. you know if you want to find out his religion, feel free to type it in the comment below. Um, okay. And also click like and subscribe to the Zcoin channel, please. Yes. That will yes. be great. And uh, see you in the next video where we will discuss more about the story of Zcoin and how Zcoin came about.